Greetings everyone, my name is The Monk, and today I'm hosting the big show. Mr. Jerk couldn't make it today, he had to rain check, something about California girls and Daisy Dukes, that's all he really mentioned. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Um, so, this is The Monk here, I'm hosting this uh, this uh, big show right now, and you know, I'll give you a wee bit of introduction of my channel. So, my channel itself focuses on the educational side of World of Warships, helping newcomers with beginner guides, those who are struggling with certain ships, aka the master classes, and after action reviews to help folks discover what they did right and what they did wrong, and the sometimes montages when the channel reaches a certain milestone, so do watch out for those. Anyway, enough about me, let's head on and talk about Mr. Manager Enhance Kirov. So, the Kirov, a uh, brief explanation of the Kirov, 180mm guns, one of the largest calibre guns out of any Russian cruiser in this game at the minute, I believe 180mm is quite large for cruiser guns, at least at tier 4, especially tier 4. So while the Kirov hopefully punishes that Phoenix, we can discuss the commander build. So we're running Nikolai Kuznetsov with Bird It Down XXL, Intuitive, which is basically Russian twist and track for cruisers, and punch through for additional AP damage and penetration multiplier, fixated for better accuracy, and EOP, which you don't really need on the Kirov, but I suppose it's just the general pick for most of the Russian line as they do benefit greatly from EOP. Kirov really doesn't need it too much, especially at tier 4. It can already pen 30 to lose of armor, but there we go. Anyway, we see the, the Phoenix, we didn't have much luck unfortunately, so we're switching to HE and we thought spot ourselves a Farragut, so we're gonna try and brutalize him, unfortunately. Just avoided it. We have the AP loaded, but we're going to keep what we have in the chamber to make sure that we can shoot that DD. We even spot a Bovoisky coming out of the mix, so we're going to pop our sonar, there we go, and we're going to smack the Podvoisky with six shells. These accurate Russian guns are very special indeed. So we're going to narrow profile up, we're going to switch to HG, and we're going to fire again at the Podvoisky, and he's not going to like it. Podvoisky, four kilometer torpedoes. No threat at the minute, he's four and a half kilometers away. Same with the Kirov though, also four kilometer torpedoes. He's getting close, he's getting into torpedo range, but he's out. And there we go, that's kill number one. There we go, the Bedoublin is strong. So, we're gonna move on here, and we're gonna push on and pursue that Phoenix, cause we don't want our food to get away. We've got double fire, so we're gonna burn damage control. We're also unspotted, so it's a perfect time to burn it. As Soon as you get it, you can burn it, and it's great. Obviously be very careful when you're burning damage controls, if it can, it can go all wrong, but with cruisers you can generally burn them quite often. So we got a Phoenix and a Konigsberg, and if the Kirov angles correctly, it naturally has no problem dealing with these boats. If it was a fair attacker or another Kirov, you can actually overmatch its own bow and stern, so be aware of that. Uh, well here we go, we find that we spot the Farragut, he has poked up again, so we switch to HE and we show the Farragut that you really should not get close to a Russian cruiser unless you're guaranteed to tarp or a Citadel and Mr. Jerk here is not one of those people that's going to get broadside to a Farragut at this range so he's going to murder the pure Farragut and we're going to keep maneuvering our speed and turning as well the Kirov is not very maneuverable and that is one of its downsides so you need to be aware of that and as you can see any torpedoes that he has fired even though our sonar has run out we're going to make friends of this island and uh, one thing torpedoes can't do is go through islands, so uh, regardless of what salvo he put, these are not going to hit and they're going to go harmlessly by the ship. Hopefully, we're going to try and show what the AP can do to our Konigsberg, who's giving a relative broadside, but RNG says otherwise. So, we're going to load up in our shot, we are fully angled against the Konigsberg, no risk of being shot up too badly. Konigsberg is now angled. So we're going to wait for a shot, he is giving a broadside, so patience is a virtue. We take the shot and four over pens again, okay, so, so far so good. The RNG is, is pipped on us twice, so maybe the third time's a charm? Well, RNG worked just for our division mate, not us. So maybe we've still got our, our two, bad, two bad runs, maybe third time's a charm for this Phoenix, who seems to have gotten away the first time we tried to add him. So yeah, oh he's also giving broadside, perfect. 180mm Russian guns versus a tier 3 cruiser. That should be, ah, there we go, 9%. There's a Citadels. That's what's more common in the Kirov when RNG does agree with you. 
So considering the C flank is effectively cleared, we're going to push up and move on to the B cap. See if we can use these Russian guns a little bit more. Uh, generally, the Kirov is a very good boat at range. If you get in close, you need to be very careful because this thing does not have very good armor. This, you're basically angling the Citadel every time you're trying to fight things. So yeah, very difficult. Twist and Track does say we've got something on our far right, probably a destroyer. And we're considering what we're going to do here because uh, Sonar's not running. We're going to need to do some turning. We're going to need to do some evading of some sort sooner or later. But we're only spotted by plane now. We're not spotted by uh, the eye, shall we say. We're not directly spotted. So there's actually no DD anywhere nearby. So Twist and Track has, or Intuitive, has switched over to that enemy cruiser, I believe. And uh, we're just going to push in and help our division mate in the Jaguar. There we go. We get shots in the middle of our tan. Unfortunately, we have HE loaded. The AP would have absolutely devastated him if RNG was on our side. So, considering he's shielding strip flap broadside to us. But the HE is more reliable, so I do understand his decision. He is turning away, so then again, the HE might not be a bad choice. We aim at the uh, Izukazi. Priority target is the destroyer. He's the only destroyer left as well. So he's even more important. So unlucky, I think we aimed a bit too high in that one, but he was duking and dodging, so there we go. Medjerk wets his finger and puts it to the wind, and we should get a decent shot. There we go, we get one shot, makes it in. That's fine, that's good enough. Any damage we do to a DD is permanent, so that is very well worth it. Again, if we had AP loaded, that'd be great, but you know, We'll, we're, we're just happy to hit him at this point because most of the shots connect with the island. So we're going to push in and we're going to try and get some flanking on that Mjolbertan slash that battleship and maybe we can get some uh, surrounding on the enemy DD and generate that crossfire that everyone loves to not be in. So yeah, as I said, Kirov, not very maneuverable, does not turn very well. Um, in terms of speed, it's all right. It's not going to win any rewards. It's not like Emil Bertrand that has a speed boost. We searched AP. We see the Emil Bertrand. We've caught it completely off guard. We're just waiting for the guns to clear the island. And what can we get? Oh, we missed. Wow. God. RNG is really, RNG is really pooping on us right now. Anyway, he's on next to no health. Uh, can we, Roger, secure this kill? Yes, we can. That's for kill number three. We switched to HE immediately for the Izokazi. And we can hopefully see if we can make this our fourth kill. And really just get rid of the destroyer threat. That's the biggest problem for our team. So, we're going to fire these rushing guns. Do secure that kill. There we go. We're in kill number four already. So, you know, it started off pretty slow and it's definitely picking up. So we switched AP for the Julius Cesare, or Leo Cesare, you want to call it. Um, definitely worth it. But we have in New York as well, that is worth noting. Uh, again, the key off AP is really, really strong. Fortunately, the New York is shooting HE at us. That could be a whole different story. And he does miss, which is really good. I always hate the New York personally. I just find it to be too inaccurate. Just so, they didn't really have anything going for it really, in my opinion. But yeah, we'll push in here and we're going to make sure that we can mitigate as much as we can. So we're going to fight one enemy at a time. So in this case, it's New York. So we fire AP into your superstructure and we're going to switch to HE. As you can see, AP on the gear off. No joke, even against battleships. We just did 8k there. A little bit more, near close to 9, but there we go. And we're just going to do what we can to angle as best we can. Because our angled citadel can bounce shots, as you can see. But we did take a pretty darn nasty shot as well. Just some sheer penetrations through the bow. So it's kind of all or nothing at this point. We just need to get close enough to torpedo this poor, poor New York. But hopefully we can survive in the process. So looking at the torpedoes here. Key of torpedoes, only 4 kilometer range. But they do hit pretty hard if you manage to get close enough to let them loose. So we fire another HE salvo in the hopes to maybe break some secondaries and just get some just general damage in. I believe that was the, the Julio, Julio Cesare, that did pop a salvo to us. That could have been nearly our death, but Russian balance does save us this time. Try and get the kill shot with the HE. Did not work. 
We fire a second set to finish off the situation. Maybe our rear guns? It's the torpedoes. And there we go. We pick up our Kraken. We also pick up the high caliber to go along with it. There we go. So, not got much health left and we can't afford to do many more shells from the Giulio Cesare. So, we're gonna definitely gonna take some cover behind the island and try and mitigate any fire we take. We could have potentially captured A, but an enemy carrier is in this game. He's not causing us too much bother, but he might cause us bother. He's, he's particularly, I think he's, uh, I think he's uh, trying to attack us right now. Yes, he is. With a squadron of bombers, I believe. So we're going to get spotted anyway, and we're going to see what we can do to the Julius Cesar to fire us a couple shots. He's having a good game. He's picked up a confederate zone, so kudos to him. He's done quite well. Uh, we're going to try and dodge, uh, just dodge as they say these bomb drops and oof that was uh i'm sorry to see the carry that was completely off oh well then. that's fortunate for me fortunate for us meanwhile we're they are shooting down his planes which is always nice uh, russian a a a is very good short range long range that does struggle but short range a is very good so we see this is all right can we finish him off no there we go so that's fine we're just gonna have to be happy with the five kills for now so, the chances are, the carrier will be up north because Medrick was the first person to spot the planes and he was the priority target for said carrier. So, the planes also came from the north as well, so follow the planes, follow the target uh, choices and you'll notice where the carrier is. There we go, we see the torpedo bombers as his first uh, set of planes, first new set of planes, first fresh set of planes that we have to fight with. and. We're going to try and dodge these, of course, because we're not too much pretty on health. Two torpedoes would probably kill us at this point, maybe even one. So we're going to try and dodge them. Bail one to the threat, and... Oh, as I said, the Kirov is not very manoeuvrable, and that was a very lucky... Oof. Alright. Very lucky drop in his part, and as I said before, Kirov is not very manoeuvrable. So, he's going to pay for it with his planes being shot down. This is a Kirov, after all, and he's very close proximity within that AA. So it should do some decently well. And he only gets a one strike off. Seems like the carrier's planes have been relatively depleted this fight. The carrier's probably gone after uh, boats with really good AA. And he could be pre-dropping Mr. Menedrick here, but considering Menedrick's health, that would be a bad choice. So I think he's been deplaned essentially, or at least reduced on the plane squadrons. So we actually get hard spotted. And carrier detection is very good, it's about 78 kilometers or even better. Of course, this very small cruiser, well, it's not a big, it's a pretty big cruiser, uh, is not going to be spotted by the carrier. Carrier will outspawn him, and depending if it's Japanese, might even outrun him, which is quite funny. Uh, so, Medjuk fires to see if uh, he can get a reaction, see what's going on. See if he's still spotted. Unfortunately, the caddy doesn't actually have any guns, so this strategy doesn't really do too much for him. He just has to spot him manually. But we have the AP loaded and we have a broadside hose show, and Medjerk is going to give him the show. So, first salvo uh, over pens. These, so this is a carrier, incredibly weakly armored. We just got to find the Citadel. That's the real problem here. So, we're going to fire again here. More of a pens, again unlucky. And maybe we'll have the third time's the charm just like we did last time. Can we get the Citadel on the third time? Carrier Citadel for the whole show is near about the middle of the ship. So if he's aiming correctly. No, okay, alright. Forget carriers are very hard to kill, incredibly stealthy, and don't have to risk their hit their hit points to fight. Alright, we're gonna try one more time get those citadels there we go we score two and we also pick up the confederate award also we're close enough to fire our torpedoes so unless the carrier is actively maneuvering you can see those torpedoes if he actually maneuvers and dodges them oh he nearly just died there we need to get another double citadel on the guy we run right into the arming distance of the enemy torpedoes and that is what saves us really at this point even secondaries could kill us but it doesn't really matter because we get the final citadel and the six kill. So, obviously that's a victory with 107,021 plane kills, six kills, seven citadels, the high caliber, the Kraken, and the Confederate with nearly 3k base XP. And 
Our division mates did exceptionally well as well, so a really strong game from Mr. Manager and his key off. So I hope you enjoyed today's big show. As always, give Mr. Manager a like and a sub, and you know, tell him what you thought about it. If you haven't seen my channel, The Monk 52, please check it out, links in the description below. As always guys, have a wonderful day, I'll catch you next time, bye for now. Hey everyone, Jerk here. I want to thank Monk for stepping in with today's hosting duties, and I hope you all enjoyed this little something different. It could be nice and a fun way to get some exposure for other content creators' channels, maybe yours. Let me know down below, and I will get back out there for another one soon, and we will talk then.